Just saying fuck A, bud. It's just the best. In the land of maple leaves and stars and stripes comes a very interesting RPG setting in the alien universe. <laughs> I don't even know how to say bud like a normal human being anymore. <laughs> just, just work at it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> bud. 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 <laughs> That's just Why? bud. Damn, I guess I'm the only old person here who remembers that stupid commercial. Never mind. Which one? Uh, one person said, Bud, and I went, Why? Oh, it's actually See, her, but... <laughs> oh, Yeah, someone here knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. Ruffle, you're a gem. Thank you. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> He's not a gem. He's the leaf behind every shit post. That's, I am. If I can take credit for one thing in life, it's definitely that one. <laughs> Okay, so here here we are. Let's let's describe the scene. We're in a, a bridge. Um, the lights are on. Uh, we're gonna say in this room they kind of flicker though because we've sustained a ton of damage to it. Um, one of the consoles somebody took an axe to, like an asshole. Um, the other console is it's kind of crappy, uh, but it managed to get sort of patched up and and we were able to work with it for a little bit. Um, there's all sorts of system chatter all over the place. We have like the crackling of spare electricity. There's probably a loose cable or two. And the hollow display is, is just freaking out. And um, it's the five of us. We're standing there. Ava 6 is also present. Um, whether we trust her or not is another story. And she's just sort of information dumped on the PCs. And being as that was two weeks ago, they've likely forgotten all of it. And at this point... We all turned to borrow going, War Master! <laughs> Agrarian! Hey. Chronicler of events! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sit back and listen to this dissertation, boys and gal. Um, so who is it? It was Dr. Biologist, right? Uh, so uh, Dr. Johns is sitting there holding his um, motion tracker. Uh, that he's used once before, and it's slowly just been on sort of passive ping. Starts so picking up a ping from outside the room, going beam, beam, beam. To anyone that hasn't seen Alien, of course, it's signifying that something is coming closer. I ping. thought it was in the vents, not the hall. Uh, no, I didn't say it was in the hall. I said it wasn't in this room. Mm. But yes, it, it does sound like it's coming from the vents. As he's he's spinning his motion tracker around, the target is getting closer and closer. And that's when Doctor Johns calls out, "I, I've got a second target, but it seems like he's above us, or it's above us." I think is a more apropos statement. So now there's two of them. Anyway, this is getting out of hands. <laughs> speaking, speaking of hands, uh, uh -oh. let's, the map has changed. This let's, is let's pop over here. Here's Leah Davis. She's got her feet kicked up. She's holding a harpoon gun and she's uh, half asleep, <laughs> possibly fully asleep at the end of last session. I think she just woke up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> her eyes are kind of doing that thing where like they're both half closed and the one fully closes and they're like flipping up. And um, she's staring at the door towards the airlock. And when she hears some sort of depressurization kind of noise, it's like, and the airlock starts opening. You see a singular Wait, suit. Is this the same airlock that was attached via umbilical? Yes. But, uh, mm. I thought we locked that. We did. We did. I specifically told her Spe to lock it. Specifically said that, yes. Okay. I know. I, re I remember that. They so, were going uh, back, and back and forth to grab air. To grab air, that's right. So you've seen people yeah. come and go in groups and ones and twos a whole bunch of times because they've been coming back and forth, getting air, getting air, getting air. All Maybe right. Origami got high and forgot to lock it. <laughs> <laughs> I was I gonna, gonna lock the door until I got. <laughs> uh, it's just a classic, man. <laughs> Center no, back. Right or is it left, right, or up, down, right? Uh, I looked up close enough that I could tell the face uh, through the uh, was it through the uh, spacesuit. 
Okay. Yeah, that's didn't chill. I also give you instructions to shoot anybody that comes in until I contact you? Presumably, yeah, except for everyone of us who's been going in and out repeatedly. Yeah, but that's the thing, though. Like, when we got to the bridge, then I went over to the, uh, that's the head console and radioed I, across saying, lock the door and keep that's it closed. True. I have a unrelated question. Mm -hmm. I have a higher security clearance than most people here because I'm a company man. Correct. You actually have the highest think. You have the highest security clearance here. I think I do. Correct, Bart. I think. Well, what if this individual has a higher rating than mine and that's how they're overriding the lock? Uh, yeah, it could be like the who's left alive still that we talked when we talked to the robot. You've got two was... popsicles and one vent gremlin. Right. We got three popsicles. Three and popsicles a... and a vent gremlin. A vent yeah, grandma. But I... <laughs> But I, th I thought that we had uh, and we have like some a couple scientists and then some others, right? Yes, we have a yeah. medic, a scientist, um, a officer, or not an officer. She's a company woman. Yep, we have a company liaison, a head scientist, a colonial marine, a head medic, and then Ada. So it's a probably the company people. lady, then. Sort of the, unaccounted for. The company lady, the head scientist, and the uh, head medic are supposed to all be on ice. It was the Colonial Marine that tweaked out and ran off into the ship. Who's also like 95 now. Yeah. All right. I was uh, quite I calling her 95, but she's quite old. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, I got a question. Okay. I'm assuming this ship is older, so they will have an older model space, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's cool. I like that. So could could I tell the difference between the spaces? Well, or it's the company give, was cheap. Give as me hell. an observation role, as this person is sort of coming up to. Um, but because of the nature of the spacesuit, it would be almost impossible to see their face unless you're pressed up against each other. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> or if you shot off the glass visor. <laughs> That's true. Um, now, yeah. Origami, um, because of the the ships, unless somebody is like speaking to you from the bridge or from Mother, uh, you can't talk to someone on the other ship. So you mm. can call out to them and be like, oh, is one of you coming back? Because I see someone coming in. But they're going to hear that through the bridge comms, and they'll have to go over and answer that. Um, yeah, so that's yeah, good. I'm, so you do actually I'm recognize, old. um, you still see a Wayland yutani little worn patch, like, fraying. Um, but this suit looks pretty tattered. It looks like it's, it's probably, um, older than, than the ones you guys had. And the hue's slightly different. Um, you know, like, a hex whatever whatever plus one or something like they changed the gray at some point <laughs> <laughs> i immediately go mm. and, um airlock you close it okay so you're hitting the airlock control i'm hitting my airlock and then once that's locked i'm going to the uh commands or the front of the pilot where i just read it and like, thing, but we believe. yeah mm. i lock my stuff in that room and i basically say there's something between us uh, in the uh, umbilical cord. Okay. I, I, I know it's not one of you, but I need some backup over here. We'll switch back. We're now in the command. You've got two pings. The one is far above you. The one seems close by, perhaps in the vents. And you hear, <coughs> like, coming through the intercom kind of thing. And Leah's message comes out. <laughs> uh, I know something is coming through through the umbilical cord. I know it's none of you, but I have it locked in the in the, in the core at the moment. So e either we need to apprehend this thing or kill it. I don't know what to do. Did you tell him that he has access to a decompression chamber linking two ships together? Okay, so um, Wilson at this point is going over to the comms and speaking. Oh, no, 
I'm just yelling at the comm because I thought someone already opened it. Well, somebody I mean, somebody would have to go over there basically and flick a switch and talk into a microphone, like an old kind of CB radio type setup. Yeah, and you have to switch it off or else you're <laughs> you're just, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I can do that actually. While well, everyone else is watching, wherever that blip is coming from. Okay. Everyone else is watching. It Wilson goes here? over. Yeah. Perfect. Wait. Where's the vent? Hang on. Uh, aren't we at the comm station right now? I wonder Underneath if the watching. people's icons. <laughs> well, technically, but I mean. I oh, I couldn't even see that. Never mind. That's comms. So. Yeah. But you would have to. Uh, you'd still like you know Wilson's not watching anything else now. He's gone and. He's he's interacting with this. Um, so what are you you saying out, Wilson? Dude, what the fuck? Well, On guard. What, it's too powerful. What, ve what <laughs> vent is the motion sensor saying it's in? Ah, okay. Over here. I'm gonna go stand there with my with my knife out. Okay. I I'll place look. myself in defense position and end my turn. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Um. Chem, uh, could you go ahead and give me an observation roll? Put my character sheet on. Don't worry, I'm blind, so this will go incredibly well. <laughs> in, in fairness, you're using a knife, not a ranged weapon. So. Nice, we love it. So you hear, like... You actually have two eyes. <laughs> almost um, <laughs> like a wet, like a, like a slight wet noise coming from the vent. Stop masturbating in there. <laughs> I was here first, man. <laughs> a raw turkey running down a hallway. Yeah. Can I see anything in the vent? Or um, is it like you, there, there is like uh it kinda it comes to a like a quick corner there, so you can't really see around it, but you almost like if you shine a flashlight, you sort of see like a slight shadow moving. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna yell, "Identify yourself to the, to the shadow." Uh, man, you're just trying to kill the darkness, or? <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, shadow replies back, "I'm the invisible man." Well, I mean, I'm gonna call the fucking flamethrower over if they don't answer. Yeah. No, uh, there, there's no reply. Okay, I call it and say, uh, "Guys, hello." Yeah, go ahead. I I still haven't heard from you. Uh, you guys okay? Hey, listen, if that thing or whatever it is or whoever it is tries to force entry without identifying themselves, you are to protect the ship. That is our only way out of here. Do you understand me? All right. So do I have the? That's none the of tube? us in the tube. We. What he said. We're not in the tube. Wait, is Ava still here? Did she wander yes. off? Ava's still here. Yeah. Okay. Also, I, want to point out, I want to point something out very, very critical here, Raffle. I am not making this supposition with the idea that the airlock to this ship is currently open, because to cycle them, you have to close one and then open another. So if we if we separate, we're not going to immediately decompress the ship we're actually in. Right, so the way I so. see it right now is we have the umbilical cord between the two, and both airlocks, well, presumably... Both airlocks are closed, but someone came through this airlock into our umbilical. Is that a fair assumption? Yep. So we don't know the and status. I, thought, I thought these had to close before you could you could attach a tight seal to open the next one because they have to change the pressure differential between the two. Yes. So, okay, I see what you're saying, right? Because there's two sets of doors, right? Yeah, I, I don't want you thinking I'm giving Oregano the idea that, hey, decompress the ship, launch that bitch into space. And you go, all right, everyone, grip something really quick and see how quickly you can grab it. <laughs> well, we're out in, in theory, it would just decompress the uh, deck A. But, um, well, it, at this, this point... Closed and this is closed. And then we pull this back and away while this door's closed. That means everything inside the umbilical is getting shot in... How do I... No, no, I get, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. That direction. Well, oh wow. Well, I mean, hypothetically, I if you're being safe about it, all the doors should be closed when people are in the umbilical. You should only ever have one door open out of all four of these doors. Correct. Yeah. Uh, Zelfus, the stick inside of the circle below the magnifying glass. You can get a little doodad. 
Yeah, I was going to say, I'm trying to figure out how to delete my half-assed arrow attempt there. Yeah, there. No, but so Wait. the thing is, uh, right now, Origami knows this door is locked. He saw this door open, and he doesn't know about the other two doors. Because something came wow. through those. Those doors should be hard-coded to not open. If Yeah, mm -hmm. only one should be open at a time, though, right? That's yeah. true. Okay. Okay, that's fair. And I, so I, I'll say actually... This one opened, which means this one can't be opened until that one's closed. But this even one's if you were a bit so of a dingus, I, I think Origami's character being a pilot would know that, like, that question, so... Yeah, I mean, there, there, should, there, should be a, there should be a physical, mechanical override to stop both doors from being open. No, that's, re like that's reasonable. Safety. That's reasonable. Okay, I'll give you that. So um, he knows for sure this door was open last. Um, and I close the door that is uh, on so, the ship. So out, the two on out. your side should be closed. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that I like that. Correct. Okay. Well. I'm not going to explosively decompress both ships and kill not only whatever that is, but also us if it comes to it. So a, a ticker tape is, is printing out beside you, um, Origami, and the, the light goes, uh, what did we decide? Like sort of a silvery green to signify that Mother wants to speak to the captain. I go over and Vader like, Mother wants to talk to you, Captain. It's silver green. I hand the uh, calm little system over to uh, our captain. Oh, he would have to go um, physically <laughs> have a tip top chat with Mother. Oh, I thought he had like one of the little like trucker radios, little um, little stretchy cord that connects it to the station. I was like, yeah, here, yeah. I want to talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, we're a bit preoccupied here, but uh, tell Mother I'll be there as soon as possible. Tell Mom that Dad's busy. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Shadow still there? The Shadow, yeah. Uh, actually, um, if you look, like, let's say you're sort of you're keeping your eye on you and you you shine the light, um, it it sort of moves slightly, just slightly as the light comes near it. I'm going to tell uh, uh, Kayla and uh, to take somebody and go and stand at the other side of that vent with the flamer out. Oh, I like that. Okay. Because the other side's just outside the door. We can leave the door open even, right? Yeah. But that would be you, Foxy. Am I supposed to physically move it? <laughs> yeah, you could. It's fun. So, uh, so I guess the bio. Who else can actually fight on this? It's it's me, Kea, Kayla. Um, everyone the can captain, punch. But the captain's busy. <laughs> I mean, like I can fire my gun, but don't expect me to hit much. But I can. I think you'd be taking it an advantage, wouldn't you? You're firing into an enclosed space in. <laughs> You're firing into a vent. It's not like you're shooting across, across yeah, a giant open area. Yeah. I mean, I think I would have uh, six dice, two stress, three agility, one range. Correct. Yeah. So it's pretty. pretty so good theoretically, odds. I should hit. But. All right. If these are borrow rolls. So who, that's why that's I right. Theoretical. So the two of you are looking like Cham and, um, sorry, Miller? Are looking into the first vent, right? And Kayla uh, and wait, what? Bernard, Miller sorry. is the captain. Miller is at the comm station. Oh, you're also well, Cham. I mean, Cham and Rye. Yeah, okay. I mean, like I would be at the comm. There we go. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, we'll just move these guys. Around. <laughs> Body boy was on the way. Cham and Rye. Okay, so you're you're coloring. I mean, you guys are like the dream team anyway. So let's chill. Um. So this uh, there's a little. Um, uh, slurpy, skittery kind of sound from the uh, the vent, and something just rushes out at you, Cham. I stab it. You stab it. Yeah, go ahead and make a uh, a combat roll there. Just combat. Do I get any modifiers for being prepared for this to happen? Uh, no. I'm gonna say that's gonna allow you to strike first, as opposed to having it sort of uh, okay. enter combat with you. Nice. 
Uh, this thing leaps out at you, and it's um, imagine like a tumor with the um, like slight little crab leg kind of things, and it it leapt out. It's about the size of um, maybe like two fists put together. Very small, very pale. It has very thin lips and like a few snaggled teeth. It leaps out at you, and you sort of pierce it really quickly with your knife as it jumps out. Pin it to the uh, ground. So, did it look like a face hugger or not quite? Okay, similar, to, similar to a face hugger, but more uh, like bulbous and like the way he was describing it. I was thinking the um, the thing right. when it was just the head. Okay, walking away. yes, I love that. Kind of like the thing, um, a little smaller than a human head, but like um, no, no, like facial features though. Kind yeah, of like but like a, you were describing it had like teeth and stuff. Though, mm-hmm. so it just... Or you can think of like a face hugger, but um, has teeth and like like kind of like a drowned face hugger, like gross and bloated. Like oh, okay. Okay. face hugger and the head crab mi- mixed together. Yeah, and it's like the skin is just like like a disgusting translucenty white, like almost like pearlescent, like it's. It is just disgusting. And uh, I think everyone's just going to take a point of stress for this, and you can make panic rolls if you like. Um, of course, not our pilot, who's safe. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the Thank fuck you. is that, basically? <laughs> yeah. Now, thankfully, there shouldn't be any penalties to you guys panicking right now, because if you're not in the middle of an action, you could fail. Nice. Yeah, you're fine. I think it's seven and up, right? Okay, Miller. Miller has a baby panic. <laughs> she's a, she's a little nervous, but that's about it. Nothing major. My stress roller. Where is that in the? Uh, so if you click uh at the very top, it'll say roll buttons. Click panic, and then you below may... your name, below career, one d three panic. Yeah, you have a panic. We've actually had pretty good rolls today, so you know what that means. They're coming. We're all going to die. That's right, yeah. <laughs> it's starting. It took me a moment to find it. Okay. So yeah, no, Wilson is not all right. Yeah. Wil- Wilson's the only person here who's like visibly shook. He like, didn't sign like up it. for this. Yeah. Miller's <laughs> like... <laughs> Find up for this. Let's be real. Miller's seen some shit. She probably made like a slight grimace, but like Wilson had like a gasp kind of thing. Like he he's not like shitting his pants, but he's like, okay, uh, what the fuck is that? Like you know, <laughs> what the fuck? Fuck. That, yeah. That's a fair question considering the situation. Oh Just yeah, it's totally. That right. out. I mean, technically, Miller should have like a shake now, right? Uh, Miller got a nervous twitch. Um, it says your stress level and the stress level of all friendly PCs in short range of you increases by one. Um, short range is that's, this room. That's seven, right? Eight yeah. Is, eight is a tremble. Okay, never mind. Sorry. Uh, you start trembling uncontrollably. Okay. So until you stop panicking, which is the end of this scene, you get minus two to your agility. And um, oh boy, Wilson, you drop an item. You sort of stressed. You're going to be able to pick this up. This is not like a major scene, but. It doesn't get deleted. Yeah, let's just say it was something like you. Um, Not you my were, favorite pair. Well, you were holding me. the like the calm thing, and, and so at the other end, uh, Leah just hears you drop the microphone, and there's like a clatter and a scatter, kind of. He's like, "Oh shit!" Like, "Are you okay?" And you're like, "Oh, um, <laughs> maybe." <laughs> Might be a bit. Of- um, there are still painter uh, papers printing out rapidly uh, beside you. By the way, Origami, um, you just hear like the ee, 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 as it's like writing all these lines. Do I read? Uh, do I read it? <laughs> you of do read I it, do. or are you saying do you read it? <laughs> You're unsure. Yeah, I, I do read it. You look over, you pick it up, and it it looks like a whole bunch of. Um, like gibberish at first the first half like you're just skimming through and it's just random letters and numbers and then at the uh the very uh sorry just 
at the very bottom, uh, it says Special Order 966 enacted. And, oh, uh, like and then it says airlock override engaged. And the airlock starts opening in front of you. And the figure starts coming through. Get your gun! <laughs> Get your gun, boy! Get my gun! Okay, so... <laughs> what's going through my head is, okay, as soon as they come through the door, I kick the door, the figure falls over, and I try to blitz my way out. Either... I, I don't know... Okay, okay. So I I call in and say it's in. I let go of the intercoms, and I I wait at the door. So whenever the figure does come open, I kick it. It tumbles down, and I'm just going uh hopefully dodge or get out of the way uh, of out of its attack. Okay, so Long you're for someone to come rescue. Okay, so let's say it's um. Wait, where's our airlock here? Just forget. Was it straight? Down I don't the fucking know, my dude. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how this ship is set up. Um, let's uh, say, let's say here. This makes the most sense to me. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. So let's say it's coming down. Uh, this I was gonna say like down here because this has fuck all in it. But, yeah. Yeah, we could do. So it's like coming in through there, and he like sees it on the other side of the galley. That's kind of fun. Yeah, okay, that's chill. Straight shot down from the bridge, just. Basically. Down this long, spooky corridor. Okay. <laughs> Anywhere it goes, I'm going to be doing uh, Ring Around the Rosies with this. With okay, this yeah. So you see it coming towards the galley, and you're going to cut down this side path here. And just yeah. hope it doesn't, because it doesn't know the layout of your ship. You're hoping you can get around behind it? Mm-hmm. Okay. All Basically right. Playing mouse. That's super fun. Okay, go ahead and give me a stealth roll. All right, just let me delete this. All right, stealth roll. Oh, bloody man. Uh, stealth is in one of the... There. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Uh, where, where's the stealth button? Um, I think it's called stealth, is it not? What's, what's it called in this story? <laughs> what the fuck is it? Yeah, that's reasonable. Uh, I'm sorry. It's probably mobility, right? Uh, mobility, that's right. Sorry, I forgot I had a fancy no, name okay. in this. Which you are insanely good at. Yeah, because you're cracked out. <laughs> yeah, well, that too. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah, how do you not have any stress? Oh, because you've been at the pilots <laughs> and you were sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so you do. Um, you manage to get around. Um, where, where are you trying to get? Are you trying to leave the Montero? No, I'm <laughs> trying to stay stay in the the ship. Okay, I'm just buying time. Okay, you're you're literally just waiting for everyone else to show up, and you're trying to hide on yeah. it. Okay, yeah. so I'm gonna go ahead and say you've succeeded. Um, as you cut around that corner, you sort of you're pressed up against it, and you you hear it rustling through the galley, looking for you, like opening cabinets and stuff like that. And you've uh, you cut across, and you're now sort of hiding around here near the med lab, and you're just listening, and you hear it stomp, 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 and start wandering off. This turned into a really tense horror movie real fucking quick. Yeah, it reminds me of the uh, "Who Turned Out the Lights" episode of Doctor Who, with like the with the the uh, spacemen that like get possessed by whatever. I haven't uh, seen that, but I love like I I didn't enjoy the new Doctor Who like I enjoyed old Doctor Who, so I didn't watch it. But I love like that you can just hop in and watch like a one-off like excellent episode that fits your your bill. So it, what was that one called? Uh, Silence in the Library. Silence in the Library, thank you. That one was uh, D uh, David Tennant, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, da I thought David Tennant was a lot better than uh, uh, whoever Nine was. Eccleson. Yeah. Eccleson, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I got a question. Is my harpoon a silent weapon? Um, Up until it hits something, yeah. 
<laughs> All right, because what I oh where am, where am I? Somewhere right here, right? Yeah, yeah. Until you hit them, and they start screaming. <laughs> yeah, and they're and they're right here, right? Yeah, they're well. They're actually they left the galley. Um, you heard them start heading south towards the so inside of the Montero. Because if we so look at the map, this is where this large scale map is, and you heard them head down this way towards cargo. Mm. Presumably, oh, so they're they looking went, for. They went down the ladder. Yeah. All right, because I want to shoot um, my harpoon. You want to uh, try and shoot at them? Yes, shoot a hit and run, basically. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna. After climbing down the ladder, he just okay. Him in the skull. I'm I'm totally <laughs> I'm totally fine with that. So you can run up, and you're hearing someone go tun 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 down down the ladder, heading towards cargo, and um. All that kind of stuff. And the rest of the ship, the big belly of your ship. Give me a ranged combat roll. Okay, ranged combat roll. And I'm going to give yeah. them a mobility roll. I, I, I'm not really trying to aim to kill. I'm trying to either slow the down like the ankle. Or oh, just okay. to like, you know, surprise. Okay. And I'm going their head uh, is kind of in the way. Okay. So the they're going tink, tink, tink down this end. They they just see the gun come up as you pull the trigger and you, like they they sort of lurch to the side and this harpoon slams into the the side wall of the um, the ladder and they reach out and they grab the harpoon and they uh, sort of like rip it out of the um, whatever like I don't know the thread the cable that you would have on That's it cool. yeah and they just keep going down holding this harpoon. Uh, but they're going down like fast now. Like maybe they start to like slide or something. Just take off. It, it, they take off. Okay. So, excuse me for a bit. So it was attached to a, uh, basically my harpoon. Yeah. Okay, so my harpoon's gone now. Well, you have the gun, <laughs> but the harpoon's oh, okay. been ripped off. Yeah. I thought you had a reload though, right? Yeah. Yeah, you could yeah, reload it. I just scream, uh, next time I won't miss. <laughs> next time I, I won't miss, yeah. <laughs> Threateningly at this uh, figure, yeah. Okay, yeah, th that was a threat I missed on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> that's um, a you, warning shot, bitch. You could actually uh, do that if you'd like. Give me a... Um, it's manipulation. Manipulation, oh, fuck. I got nothing of that. Well, I mean, I just, and you have no stress either. You have a fair amount of empathy. So, all right. Let's see. Can we s say that they, that miss stressed them, or um, yeah, I'm gonna say the miss gave them a stress. I was gonna give them an extra point of stress if he like got his taunt off, <laughs> but um, they they heard they knew it was an empty threat. Yeah, whoever but... they are, they're scared. <laughs> they're scared and they're running. They... But the problem is they're running away from the airlock. Because the airlock is up. They went down. You have to go past the person with the gun. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Alright. So I'm going to do one more, like, sneak or hide, run, whatever. And we'll send the, the scene back over to them. Uh, so you're going to what? I'm going to uh, uh, make a uh, run. Because I hit him run. Oh, you're chasing after them down the ladder? No, no, no. Uh... Hmm. What what's in the second uh level basically? Cargo, your engines, um the hyperdrive. Is that the only can... ladder back up or does this ladder also connect to down there? Um I think that ladder should connect to down there, yeah. Is there another ladder that I could get to? Yeah, you could uh you could go to this one up here and then start running through the bowels of the ship. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure that they don't try to do anything crazy with the engine. Okay. Because if the engine goes out, we're all fucked. That's, that's completely reasonable. So you're now down in the bellies of the ship. Um, everything down here, except for the cargo bay, only two people can navigate safely. And neither of them are here. <laughs> that would be uh, Cham and Kayla. Um, you're, they're basically the only two people that sort of regularly walk through these because 
Um, OSHA wasn't here. <laughs> <laughs> um you have wires draped over stuff you have tools left out um you're basically running on catwalks and underneath and beside you are pipes that belch steam it is hell <laughs> osha's dead pray yeah. to me <laughs> that's right <laughs> make sure uh, you reload yeah and they've got a head start on you so why don't you go ahead and give me a mobility roll yes they would uh Origami has returned to being a rat. <laughs> returned to monkey. I, I have become rat. Unfortunately, they're a better rat than you. They fast as fuck. Boy. They, they failed twice, though. They did. Oh. They did not fail in their panic or their stress, though. All right. So, of course, before we reach the engine room, I reload mm -hmm. and just hide. Okay, so you're you're behind them. So they've already been in this room. They have the upper hand. Um, but yeah. yes, you're you're in the engine room now. You've tracked them and you've stopped hearing them. Um, you're all you hear now is like your sort of ragged breath as you try and catch your breath. The engine room is loud. You just hear the churning of machinery, the spitting of smoke and steam. There's an engine that you don't really even understand how it works. Uh, you know the things in here are highly explosive. Um, not to mention the cargo right now. If it remotely went up, dear God. And um, let's draw you a quick little scene here. Um, probably... I think we'd make a new page just for this. Um, and uh, hang on, let's make the uh, background here black so that it's space. The final frontier. <laughs> uh, oops. There we go. Cool. And let's go ahead and grab our good friend Leah. So we have a long catwalk, say here. Uh, you're at the entrance to the room, which is down here, and there's basically like stairs getting up. And then a catwalk overlooking, uh, for simplicity's sake, let's just include the tiles. Right about here, we have a terminal, we have a Fuck huge. This is one of the many blocks of the engine. Um, and you've just come in this door. And sort of the rest of the room, if you had to navigate through that, would uh, just be a bitch. <laughs> you just need a mobility roll to not fall into something horrible. Ah, all right. But you don't, so. you don't really hear anything, just the roaring of the engine. And... Um, you know, prep, maybe maybe like a woman's intuition, or maybe just that sort of uh, meta knowledge we all have. The true fear that something may be going for the terminal by the engine. You start checking there first. So it is your turn in combat. Let me go. Oh my combat. Uh, let me see now. Uh. What can I do? So in this game, um, movement, you can move one uh, like area per turn. So an area could be a room, and larger rooms are broken up in the blocks based on how difficult it is to move through them. Just usually assume doorways, um, you, you can move you know, sort of like one, just like we were moving before on the, the main map outside of combat. Uh, but you can only move one per turn in combat. So for you, this is one area, this would be two, and this would be your, your third up here on this catwalk. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, I would try to sneakily uh, head to the terminal. Okay. 
So you're you're creeping, you're sneaking around. We like it. Um, you you see a figure standing over the terminal, and they've they're they're typing into it. They swipe a key card, and um, at that moment you hear very loud klaxons and red lights come on, and uh, things generally seem bad. And um, uh, maybe like a little. I don't know. Would they have like a like a voice, a computer voice talking? I, I like the idea of mother never talking to you, and it's always through like text and terminals. But I think they so would. I thought there problem. was a, a message when they prime the ships to self disrupt. Right. I feel like something like that, like a Siegs in shitty synthesized, you know, um, yeah. engine overheat in five minutes or something like that. So it's an overheat. It's not the ship primed to self destruct. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna say that the uh, the engine's gonna overheat and explode, kind of thing. Okay. Uh, and Kermit has back towards me, and oh, well, he's nice got his effort. side towards you. Yeah, but you have you have the jump here, because that's what they did. All right, and I do have enough mobility to do a charge. Am I right? Oh yeah, you could you could run in there and take a shot, or you could run over like here and take a shot, whatever you like. Uh, I would basically run up and use my uh um Did you died? I think somebody came up just from talking to him. Oh, okay, okay. Let's give him a minute. Because I don't mind... Uh, oh, is that origami? Whack him. Oh, just like melee them? They're a lot better at ranged origami. I feel like, I feel like it, you know, if he's the star of the show, like I don't want to take away from that by like having him just role play through text. Um, mm. So why don't we? Oh, are you back, Origami? Oh no, I thought that was Origami saying something. Okay, no, that was hard. Sorry, dude. Okay, so let's pop over to the Cronus deck B for the moment. I mean, that's always like a thing they do in movies, right? Where it's like cut in between. So going forward. This requires a little bit of work from everybody, and I'm going to apologize. I like to try and do everything. Uh, I had been thinking about this session and what I learned from the first session, which is always just sort of getting your teeth into the setting, getting your teeth into the system and going, okay, I know it. I didn't play it the way I wanted it to, but now I understand a little more. I think we all need to um, set aside our preconceptions of role-playing system and setting and games and just play it like a movie because alien is very cinematic and all i'm asking is we're gonna have to split the party at some point that's it i'm just gonna throw that out there just you know because they always split up in movies and it is very hard to make things scary and feel like you're isolated and stuff like Origami is now. He's getting to really enjoy this because he's off by himself, which is pretty cool. Um, so at one point, I'm going to split you guys into two groups, but I'll let you uh, you pick your groups. Um, <clears throat> but uh, that that's all, you know? It's just, I feel like that's going to make Alien pop a little bit for us. So... Right now, we have Cham. He's got this creature murdered. He's probably dug his knife out of it. Maybe not. I don't know I, if he would have. You wouldn't? I would have. You would have, yeah. Okay, I thought so. You, you'd want to be armed. So this thing's laying there. He's handed it over to Dr. Scientist, uh, which is Rudy's character. And Rudy is looking it over, and I 
don't usually like making rolls for uh, sort of PC characters when they're not here, but. So he, it's, he, he looks it over and he's like, all right, I've never seen anything like this. It, it's obviously some form of an alien life form, but I don't know what it is. I, I don't, maybe if I had more data, I could cross-reference kind of thing. And... That's when Ava is, uh, of course, going to react and be like, this is similar to the um, accounts that we heard from the planet and the Draconis system that we found specimens at. We didn't find this one exactly. Uh, I, I didn't witness much of the crew disappear or die, as we assume, but I've never seen this one. The one I saw was much larger. Great. Oh, um, yes. Out of character, mm -hmm. something Brady said that he did want his character to do during the session was he wanted to uh, study the um, blueberry egg yes. thing from there from the whatever character so fire. this could be part of our split um we are going to be going and grabbing um or or sort of rounding up stuff and taking it to the science lab i would assume the science lab on this ship yes yes so and bringing that ship back on the mine no play that safe so i do think it's a fair thing is maybe um we have rudy uh another character sort of help him look into it um maybe I need we to go thought... back to my ship because one it's been boarded and two mother wants to talk so and maybe we sort of ask um <laughs> the other scientists there's there's the two scientists the medic and the scientist sorry uh maybe thaw them out and bring them to the side lab as well and we could have our, our three scientists sort of crunch because one of them's already worked on an inoculation for this an inoculation that theoretically worked or that theoretically, theoretically turned people into space monsters you know and that's up in the air <laughs> but i'm just saying you know maybe between the three of them they could solve that could do i mean like that. the uh and yes that's true leah did sort of shh, it's in you know like so we we know we have one so you're gonna head towards the montero Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm heading towards Montero and I'm going to grab whatever, somebody. Uh, Cham would volunteer. Okay, so you and Cham are heading back up to the Montero. Awesome. Um, just going to let you go. So we now have this crew down here. And at this point, um, there's a, a pop-up. After you've, you've left and you guys have said, look, we're going to Montero, we're going to sort it out. There's some shit going down up there. Um, there is a pop-up on the, the hollow display. It sort of half functions. Um, and it starts spicking, spitting out a ticker tape. And specifically calls out John J. Wilson. Please see Mother. John Jacob Tangleheimer Smith. Yeah. Deck two. Wait, that guy's name is my name, too. And mine. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, John Jacob Jingleheimer Smith is not here. He never got back from feeding the fucking animals 20 minutes ago. Oh, that's unfortunate. But that's okay. So we'll, um, we'll pop over now. Solve a little more of our Montero shenanigans. So we now have you in the belly of the beast. And... We have our rest of our crew. We have Vanessa, and we have Cham. We said airlock was here. This is what we agreed on. 
I don't think it really matters. I thought it was here. Uh, that that actually airlock, makes right? more sense. Yeah. The wait, <sighs> which one's the symbol for airlock? You've got an intercom and a computer. I think it's that one, isn't it? Because that's the intercom. But then there'd be an airlock here too. Then. Oh yeah. Honestly, um, the scenario as written has a lot of great things going for it. Uh, it kind of writes off and forgets about the Montero the second it shows up. <laughs> Uh, which I think is hey, Fringleheimer Schmidt. Mother wants to talk to you. <laughs> oh, hey, Zelfus, how you doing? Yeah, sorry about that. Dog wouldn't take its pills, so we had to had to fight for it. Okay. Um, what was the last thing you heard? It's hunting for you in the cafeteria. You hear it. Fuck okay. Wow. Well, that escalated. <laughs> um. Uh. Yeah. So Leah Let's has now, yeah, Leah's chased it into the engine room and the, the ship is, uh, which is exactly what, of course, uh, Vanessa and Cham are about to walk into, which is wah, wah, uh, engine overheat in three minutes. Oh, no. Yeah. And we have about a billion tons of uh, explodium on board. So that's not cool. Um, okay, he turned off the coolant to the engines. Right. I'm on the top deck here. Could I just go under the bridge and hit the off button on the engine so they stop overheating? Okay, that's reasonable. Sure. You could do that. Just dump the coolant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I mean, literally just turn them off because, like, what the fuck ever. Yeah, that's or fair. So you, you pop in this there. universe, are the engines separate from the reactor, or does do the engines provide power? Oh, as okay. Like a side I actually don't know that. I assumed it was all one unit. Oh, I I assumed you literally meant the engines. Oh. Oh, sorry. I was thinking like the you know like the engine reactor room, because uh, mm, that's okay. what I meant more in my head. Um. So okay. the power source is overheating. Yeah, so we can just retcon that if if that makes more sense thematically or, or uh, settingly. But um, yeah, so the reactor's overheating, sorry. Okay. Well, we'll turn everything down to like minimum then. Give it longer before Give it Give it longer? Yeah, I like that. Um, Switch to emergency lighting to get it this even more cinematic. Nice. <laughs> exactly. So you like cut... Lighting it's... off. Air filtration yeah. off. Like just literally everything because... Like, even turning off the air filtration with only four people on the ship, we're going to have enough air for hours. So, yeah, turn just okay. off, 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 off. So the whole... It's it's just all down. Um, and Pretty much the only thing running is, like, emergency lights and mother. That's it. <laughs> but yeah, that's fair. Okay. So that We're down to that. Um, which... Yeah, Origami's not back, is he? No. I left you all alone for ten. Oh, minutes. Orgami, is that you? Yes. Okay. I think so. So let's it's pop. Our fault. Let's pop it's back the... to you for a minute. So it's here you are. Um, at this point, Leah has run up, and she, you wanted to whack this guy in the back of the head or something like that with your pistol or your harpoon. Yes. Sorry. So you yes. you run up, and as you're running up, the room goes black. And then slowly, and this tiny little, like the shittiest lighting you've ever seen in your light comes on as you're teetering. Fucking five lumen <laughs> incandescent. Yeah, as you're teetering <laughs> on this like no railing catwalk. Uh, and the person beside you turns to you and you see a face. Is it a spooky skeleton? It is not. It is a very old woman. Uh, I just crash into them. I, I try to stop, but okay. My yeah. moment to just give me a close combat. You're swinging, swinging that fang, <laughs> swinging that thing. That thing being a knife. No, oh, it's so he's the back of his harpoon gun that I'm he loaded. Try to rifle butt somebody. <laughs> I'll be like, I load the harpoon gun, yeah. then I hit them with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's some caveman oh. tier shit there. <laughs> <laughs> My gun's unloaded, it can't melee. <laughs> Reload <laughs> knife. No, SpongeBob, we have technology. <laughs> Sorry, Origami, what do you do? 
Oh, I, 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 I oof, almost accidentally put range combat. It's not what I want. Uh, what is it? Close combat? Yeah, at a, at a minus one, because it's like black as fuck in here. Oh. Uh, if any case, I'm just going to uh, body slam him. Oh, you just body slam? Oh. <laughs> are you aren't you good at aren't you good at shooting don't you have a stress I, I, i'm not no he doesn't have any come. stress he's got two range Maybe. combat and five agility and he went for the Wait, two but, strength melee with zero close combat no but then why is there only one dice not two no because it minus one because it's pitch black well it's not pitch black uh, it's dark yeah but basically what i'm thinking is careful like, franchise home. infringement <laughs> as um like in mid swing it cuts like I'm like halfway running about like uh hit the um hit this poor bastard uh the lights cut off I lose my slip uh I lose my footing and I'm just body slam at this point oh okay but, so I think it's they kind of like miss. like you you hit into them but they catch you and they yeah. um they grab like a, a wrench on the ground basically and they're gonna Gonna take a big old swang at you. Who's leaving okay. tools around? I don't. I keep a clean ship, thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, that's interesting. Well, hang on. This scene could get fun. It is dark fight. Okay, <laughs> this I scene think it did just get fun. This scene did get fun. Uh, that's drop, right? Yeah, that's drop. Okay, well, um. They hook their arm backwards and the wrench just keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> Clangs off the wall. Shit! Uh, they let's... fucking dislocate their old person at shoulder. <laughs> Grandma throws out her hip. <laughs> oh, my arthritis is acting up! I can't <laughs> Yeah, so let's have, Damn like... Gr Grandma, like, swings back and the wrench just slips out of her hand. Probably also <laughs> because you, like, crashed into her and she lost her balance. So now you're just, like, freaking wrestling on the ground, rolling between how, these two... How does it feel to, to be losing in a wrestling match to a uh, senior citizen in space? <laughs> in bulky <laughs> space suits. <laughs> <laughs> Twister. Yeah. All right, I'm hyped up on adrenaline. That's true. Yeah. I'm gonna say actually, because you're an adrenaline junkie, uh, if you had one stress, you would lose it. But at this point, you fight at a full two strength. <laughs> Look at you. You don't take minus one anymore. Give us another close combat if you want. I'm just surprised how fucking strong this geriatric old lady is. Like, fucking Christ. Yeah, she's a beast. <laughs> like, she's God, insane. You, she you just... scattered this person. What is it? The five straight <laughs> She's <laughs> as strong as I am. <laughs> <laughs> she was a colonial marine. <laughs> I'm already built. I'm built like a shit house. She's built like a fucking deluxe shit house. <laughs> She's a colonial marine that probably got mutated by the same shit that made it so the janitor could tear four people apart. Uh -oh. So uh, maybe the janitor was just especially hungry that. That's day. right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what's your plan here, Leah? You're, you're you tumbling and like rolling. Um, I'm gonna okay, say actually. Uh, why don't I'm gonna have both of you make a mobility roll here? Yes, I was about to say like I like that. Put each other off. Okay, yeah, to see to see if one of you like falls over the edge or something. Oh, I get it. Was it? Well, I, I think you're pretty agile, so yeah, you, in mobility. Mobility, but with a modifier of one or two. No, no, you don't get a oh a plus no. one because you're adrenaline junkie. Yeah. yeah, you're living on the edge right now, and you're loving it. Oh no! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh. Like so they're they're nice. rolling but... on the floor here, like in slow motion, because they're in super padded suits. <laughs> <laughs> and then Valerie just like just like boots her a little bit and Leah you're now uh like this is like that scene from that famous movie The Star War <laughs> and you're like hanging on the edge looking over the reactor <laughs> oh, thank goodness everything is off so I'm gonna hurt real bad when I fall <laughs> uh, can I can I 
so currently I'm like hanging over the edge, right? Yeah, you make this even more Star Warsy, and oregano shoots as uh, it shoots light off the edge. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now we're getting out of here. <laughs> All right, so you're, you're hanging on the edge there. You're staring up. This is the face of no mercy looking down at you. Actually, we're we're gonna say that Valerie probably looks sad. She probably looks like this wasn't her first choice. She she feels bad as she starts lifting her boot. How far down the ladder? Oh man, it would take. It, the ship would probably bolt. Well, no, because you've cut the power. I would say yeah. you could probably make it here in like three turns of combat. Take us forty five minutes to travel through our own ship. Yeah. Well, I mean, you got Cham. Well, can... I mean, it took us five minutes to and feet in the other ship. So yeah, I, I don't know the movement in this game. I'm not so two, in love com- with. two combat. Um, three, two yeah, moves, three, three. Yeah. So come on, uh, roll mobility and pull a fucking uh, Obi Wan <laughs> Kenobi and cut her in half. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, I was thinking, like, are they onto her boots or something, but let, you guys go ahead. No, 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 it's you. You're here. Valerie's oh, right. looking sad, and Can she I probably... Have mobility to go faster? She probably, like, <laughs> mouths the word, like, I'm sorry, you know what I mean? And the boot's coming down. Uh, I, I, I try to grab a boot. Like, I try to let okay. go, and I can't try to grab a boot. Okay, so give me those, give me like, mobility to see if you can grab this thing. You're coming with me, bitch. It's your mobility versus I'm actually. Mobility why don't you scooter. give yourself a point of stress too? I would say this is stressful as fuck. It should be like <laughs> fucking. This should be for me, and I'm this just should a be plus ten stress. <laughs> so I guess my my modifier. Let's say zero let's say two point. points of stress. Give yourself two points because this is yeah. literally the end of your life if you fuck this up. Yeah, and right, I right. I would think even Leah, cracked up. Would feel a little worried. Uh, okay, so how do you do the stress? Yeah, um, so, so you stress the little below of stress. your buddy rival. Click the okay. two on there. Okay, okay, that was so many words. Okay, <laughs> left side, personal agenda, relationships, stress level. Click two on there. Okay. I think you have to click both the pips, though, because each pip has yeah. an extra dice. Yeah. All right. Okay, but... Yeah, now so you have mobility. two things of stress, and now you roll your mobility. Uh, oh, with a yeah. plus one for being a junkie. An adrenaline junkie. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm high on living, and I'm not doing good at it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I don't care. What don't the care. fuck? I, I like what this, this uh, is going, okay? This yeah. is, like, astronomical at this point. We've already <laughs> failed to <laughs> fucking 25%. Oh, this is God. Fox dying in Blood Bowl. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's Wait, a blast uh, in the past. Or, or origami yeah. can push. Oh, that's true. You can re-roll anything you don't panic on. So you could re-roll this whole set of dice, but you take oh, a point. Yes. Of, you take a point of stress for doing it. Oh, and origami funny. can push twice. That's true. His character is yeah. <laughs> do it, man. Let's do it, origami. Literally, life or death. <laughs> you <laughs> literally have to. <laughs> Be the hero we want you to yeah. be and you have within yourself to be. Roll. It's like stress on first or after? You put it on first. So Leah does okay, like... Okay, so Regan, you have three pips of stress now. She, she like grabs oh. at the boot she misses and as she's like falling back and giving in, it's like that little that little bit of crack in her bloodstream <laughs> it just gets up to the brain. <laughs> A little nugget of crack makes it up to the brain stem. Hang on, I can do this. Yeah. Her body was like, I was saving this for breakfast, but... <laughs> Her severe drug addiction has <laughs> let her body disappear. Oh, yeah. Okay, oh, push no. it again. Push Let's again. Pull it. Okay, you have push. to yeah, one one more stress. Origami. Literally, you have to. <laughs> one more stress, origami. Add it on and I push it. No, it's gonna. No, no, it's gonna kill it first. The fall or an aneurysm. Dude, I, I want to <laughs> believe. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, god. Okay, oh. Give us a stress roll, origami, and before you have a heart attack. <laughs> It's too much crack. Yeah. All right, how do this just roll? Okay. Uh, in the middle, you got D sixty six initiative dice, stress dice. Oh my god. Uh, D6. Oh no. Oh, I see. Yeah. All right. Okay. How many stress dice? Uh, uh, think, uh you just click four. it and. Yeah, yeah, you just, just, like just, just call stress dice. 
Yeah, how many stress dice for submit? Oh no, not oh. like that. Sorry, you um, you just you panic. Click roll panic at the top. Oh okay. yeah. Oh, I thought he was rolling stress. Well, no, he was rolling two stress. Oh no. You start to tremble uncontrollably. All skill rolls using agility suffer minus two. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, but, but, oh. But, but he does... Well, technically, not a fail kind of fail. I, I don't think unless it says you fail, you fail it. So I just right. managed to hold on. That's all what happened, right? Um, or do you fail an action if you stress? Hang on, let me... Fuck. I should pull that up. Sorry, guys. Stress, stress, stress. You think that would be at the bottom of the uh, t the panic table? Here we go. Stress. Well, it's like catatonic, and you attack people, or you run. Yeah. Wouldn't that be amazing if he gets like hypertension in his fingers? He's now gridlocked onto that person's boot, and just like, yep, we're not going anywhere unless you pull me up. Okay. Uh, roll panic. Yes. Okay, we know. Solution. By the way, I think Oregon is no, only one only on a ten or a higher. Okay, only only a ten or higher do you fail your action. Um, so Origami does like. It, he just grabs on, and you have one hand on their boot now, and you're shaking. <laughs> uh, give me a strength to try and pull yourself up, which you have, like, no skill in, but you never know. Yeah. Just start pulling. You're like, not today, motherfucker. <laughs> this is my ship and my crack. <laughs> <laughs> Cocaine them. <laughs> uh, uh, so, where's the stress? Um, not stress. Um, what's oh my the, God. What was it? character motivation there are drugs i've yet uh, to try strength. i must live yeah uh, you can give like a stamina roll i think that's fair you can add your skill yeah. to that. i don't know if you have anything in stamina you don't okay no. either way and no modifiers because i got point stress and i'm a joint junkie so that evens out oh your stress is gonna add stress to this. gives you better yeah yeah it's easier to do stuff in stress but you could panic oh actually all right no, yeah, you're you're good. You're good. It should be a one because of adrenaline junkie, though, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, you did it. Oh, I did. The stress. You just pulled yourself up. You're now back on top. You're face to face with Vanessa, and um, or uh, not Vanessa. Sorry, with uh, Valerie. Combat ensues. And she's For the love of God, get down there faster. <laughs> yeah, and so this is we're gonna say you guys show up at this point um the valerie well you see a figure standing over another figure uh one of them has like no balance the other one has reached down and picked up a wrench again and is uh is going in well, i mean is is an origami kind of short uh yeah i'd say origami's kind of short yeah is valerie kind of short kind of huge okay i'm gonna shoulder check her okay that's fair okay the wrench comes down crack right into your visor origami splits your forehead open um that would be three points of damage so you're now broken that's fine yeah uh not the resigned yet. attitude of a drug addict that's it, survived survived okay <laughs> let's go ahead and get our friends here though friends comrades yeah can, can i try to shoulder check her into the pit absolutely so you can give me a um, either stamina or close combat, whichever you think is more sort of apropos. I mean, and they're exactly the same. Do I get a surprise dice? Yeah, I'll give you a surprise dice. She's definitely not expecting this. Or got me, give me a d66. So you um, do it, Dino. Do it. Do it. Or actually, I believe in you. I guess the easy way to do that is roll two d6 for me, if you could. I was gonna push this until I fucking died if I didn't pass. Okay. So you got a 25. Um, uh, wait, you need that from Regano or from Dino? No, from Oregano. Okay. So, uh, Regano's rolling for permanent wounds. Yeah, so when you, you fell down, you fell um, maybe during the combat, like some piece of like the 
the grating got broken or something and you've impaled your thigh on a like an open pipe or something. Okay. Um, so you can no longer uh, run. It, well, Damn, running's like, a slow what? action. It's what it is. So the you have to take your whole turn to run. So the and bleeding, you're hurting, but you're not dead. Uh, you will still bleed out if someone doesn't save you. And yes, you, uh. you check her. She goes, she's knocked. We're going to give her a mobility roll to see if she topples. Um, but she is pretty stressed, so. Nice. Okay, Ooh. well, she's hella mobile, but she's about to panic again. She's, she's getting very panicked. Sure, roll a 10. <laughs> Oh. Uh, well, that's still, that's good. I'm going to say, like, because she's stressed out and everything, like, you know, this would give minus agility, uh, although she was hella mobile. Um, yeah, maybe she just spins around and she's shaking, but she has a minus two to her agility for this scene. Uh, sorry, you're back up. Got, here's the crew. It's now your turn. What's uh, Borrow doing? Well, the problem is that there's people in my way now. I mean, that's true. I think Gami is still kind of hanging there. I would say, like, Origami's yeah. laying on the ground, on the basically, because yeah. his leg's impaled. Like, you can consider him a non target. You're just going to take the shot? The clack, the gats coming out? <laughs> Get her uh, dick in! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, question, which way is the reactor? Is this the reactor here? This is one part of the reactor. There are many so, parts. where we were is where she was fiddling with, though, right? Yeah, we're champ standing. That's the terminal. Okay, but firing this way, then I'm not going to hit the reactor. When that's I correct, no. Not unless you, like, mega fuck up. But I you... just turn the gun, you know, 90 degrees <laughs> to the right, pull the trigger. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Now, I didn't write this down, so I don't believe so, but did the pulse rifle have any ammo? Um, I thought it had one mag. I thought, so yeah, I feel like I gave it a mag. I'm gonna hit that bitch with the pulse rifle. I love it. <laughs> Go for Okay, so you get bonus plus one to your dice. Uh, and it deals two damage base. It's All right, so knife. that's silly. So ranged combat plus one, eh? Yeah. Uh, and can someone get an audio fire. clip of a pulse rifle firing, please? I think we <laughs> we all need to hear the M four one A. I I can hear it like just echoing in my head, but I'm sure Fox hasn't heard the damn thing. It has a very unique sound. Mm -hmm. Love it. So just wrap up. So you're just gonna add that to bonus damage. Um, or you could use it for uh, combat gobbledygook. Let's see here. Uh, wrote this down somewhere. Uh, you could also you full wrong. auto if you want. but <laughs> Does full auto get me more dice? <laughs> uh, yeah, it would actually um, give you plus one stress, so you'd have another stress die and plus two dice. There goes uh, um, lobster. And... I mean... Well, what would happen with what I currently have? So if you just want to add that now, normally we would have done it ahead of time, but you just give yourself another st stress and just make a roll for 2d6 and then 1d6 to simulate the two extra normal dice and your stress die. Entirely up to you. Because this lady uh, is uh, huge. I'm not sure if you're wait, worried about I'm having... I'm going to use the actual dice roller for that. So 2d6, 1d6. Okay, cool. So, nothing and nothing, but that's fine. Um, you do get another point of stress from that, but you just unload full auto. Curiously, in this game, you only run out of ammo when you run out of ammo. <laughs> um, I don't know. We'll see how that ends up working. But uh, you're using full auto, but you still have a magazine left. Don't worry about that. But it's like, beep, 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 kind of, you know, like, brap, 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 <laughs> fires well, off. Mean... That magazine has like ninety six rounds in it, right? Ninety is it ninety nine or ninety six? But yeah, it's like a billion. <laughs> like, 
a lot. It's got enough. Because you've got the ticker on the side and it counts down, which is hilarious. Yeah, I think it I think it does have ninety-nine rounds in it, or maybe it has a hundred so then one in the chamber. One in the chamber and ninety-nine <laughs> in the mag. Because the readout only has two digit spots in it. Yeah. Did so, you spec for a quick reload? <laughs> fast hands. So uh, there you go. Are you just dumping that all in the damage? Uh, yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, other uh, options so, you could do here, just just to throw it out, you could use one of those to uh, pin a target, um, which would force her to panic. Or you can make her drop a weapon, or make her go prone, or be pushed. Oh, I know what we're doing. <laughs> Wait, but I'd be pushing her that way, though, wouldn't I? Uh, yeah, that's. I mean, it's cinematic, so we could say you're shooting at an angle and like, but yeah, I'd I'd probably give her a mobility roll to see if she goes off, but she's at minus two. Up to you. So it so does look I like those. those... If I put those into damage, it would be doing four damage. Though. Yes. Otherwise, it's two, and she gets pushed. Yeah. Or, uh, sorry. Would... I mean, since this pit is so fucking critical to this scene, fuck it, we'll see if she goes flying off. I love it. Okay, so you do two points of damage. Actually, it's... Uh, three. You do three points of damage. Just everybody's going in the pit. <laughs> yeah, it's we love WWE it. It's WWE up in this bitch. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'll say, though, three points of damage, she staggers, but she's not down. So, not great. And at a minus two. Oh my god. Why the fuck? Raffle's she, cheating. Yeah, she, she's, Ra Raffle's just cheating on the dice. <laughs> Raffle has not failed fucking once. He's Haven't using I? the fudge roll. No, I've I've got plenty of panics, though. Uh, she's panicked a few times, but okay, this lady is is a beast. Well, she's going in. Um, I mean, Leah's already down. Uh, I'm gonna give her a point of stress though for getting shot in the fucking chest. Um, Ralph will just be like fudge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say she takes a swing at Cham here. I feel like that's quite reasonable because I don't think she'd make it over to Miller. Oh, if so, she did, she's gonna get lit the fuck up for it. Okay, what this? Oh my Can god! Can we like do a do we do like opposing close combat or is it always mobility? Yes. So combat? you can block. So if you block, you um, I believe you oppose your close combat. Um, yes, including your stress. And every success you get takes one damage away. Okay. So she's hitting you for um, three points of damage, but you did you manage to block one, probably because you weren't ready for her to not be down. And it's now yep. Cham's turn. Um, Origami, you're you're just bleeding. You want to go ahead and make a um... shit. Sorry, I forgot. Is it a medical? You have to make some sort of a roll to not bleed out. It's probably not medical. Because that would make sense. It's probably like stamina or something. Or not, not mental trauma. Yeah, stamina. Okay. So you have to make a stamina roll here. 99 rounds. Love her. Okay, yeah, good. You survived. Wow, I made it. If you ever fail your stamina roll, you die. Um, like no your way. death roll, it's called. And uh, every time you have to make it, you take a die off it. So go ahead and panic for me. <laughs> panic rolling on the ground. Panic rolling on the ground, yeah. Life ain't great, but I ain't dead. Leah's going to be the only character that survives at the end. You just watch. She's she's a survivor. It ain't much, but it's honest work. It ain't much. That's right. Um, so you just start twitching nervously. All friendly PCs near you get an increase in stress. Okay. Yeah, that's possibly imagine a good thing right now. That's a good thing. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we want more of define that. Define near. He's in the bottom of the pit. 
So funny enough, it's actually short range, which means like in this room and technically you're in a separate area. So you don't get one. So the captain doesn't see this fucking seizures going on. He sees the seizures, but he's also got an M14 assault repulse rifle. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm more busy sighting the pulse rifle <laughs> on apparently Grandma Immortal over here. Yeah, this fucking person's blessed by goddamn Ares or something. Uh, Jesus, just a god of fucking war. Yeah, uh, she wasn't going to be the main villain, but she is now. <laughs> I, I'm scared of what the main villain stat line is. If this is not the main villain <laughs> stat line, Cham, give me a give me a close combat or whatever you plan to do. Yeah, I'm gonna stab her. A little bit. Oh, stabby stab. Nice. Um, Your knife does two I push damage. That, right? You guys, I think I should push. That oh fuck yeah, you should push that. Because I mean, is, literally, is pushing, she's going to kill all of us. So yeah, is is pushing a straight reroll or does it add? You do plus one strength and then you reroll all non successes. Okay, so yeah. So you just so plus one strength but minus one because he has a success, so basically just roll the same then? Yeah, can, I, can yeah. I just roll again without increasing my stress right now, but then the last black die is actually a... Wait, we can't see if it... No, no so okay, what, what you do is you just add one stress and then do minus one on your roll. Oh, that makes sense. <clears throat> yeah, because you already have a success. Okay, <laughs> so that's two stab, and your knife does one damage or two damage? It does two damage. It does two damage. Okay, uh, but give me a panic and hope it's not a ten or higher. Okay, cool. Uh, you're now twitching, and you've now made Leah stress more. <laughs> <laughs> um, and is that is that including yourself? Is that what it said? I I hope not because um, that's when the stress starts getting a little high. You start panicking, uh, like literally panicking now. Uh, seven. Um... Increase your stress level. Yeah. Okay. So yours would also go if another one champ. Um but nice. that said, you how are you finishing her off? Are you just stabbing like up through the gut? Are you like breaking in through the faceplate and going through like a throat slit or something savage? Can I like stab her under the rib and push her into the pit? I love it. Yeah. So Cham like just knife in between like the rib blades, he twists, you hear a crack, and he just throws her backwards. And she just like down into the pit and explodes into a ball of lightning. Yeah, Wait, where have I seen this before? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, no, uh, we were going Phantom Menace. So That's she right. Yeah. <laughs> she falls in half, just bounds around. <laughs> well, if we go with Phantom Menace, she lives. Well, either way, she lives, I guess. <laughs> Rip. Uh, okay, where's the nearest ladder to get down there? Does anyone have we medical? Have to... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Miller, <laughs> do you have? Yeah, med- I, I do. Oh, actually, you're hella empathetic. You want to try and do that before we make another death roll? But the problem. Yeah. Okay, well, Miller can we just can we just say that I go down there because he's in the pit, right? Uh, oh, he... they're not in the pit. Yeah, they're they're on the catwalk here. It's fine. Uh, you can okay. you can sort of step down basically. <laughs> and Leah's just laying there, like spitting up blood. Her leg is just. It looks bad, but she's you know. A little bit of uh, the help too. Yeah, I, I have decent empathy, so and I'm stressed give... as fuck. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you could both do it separately if you like, or you and could give him Miller's a plus my... one. Miller's my friend, so I'm basically just grabbing his hand. Um, with the Miller's hand. Oh, so, <laughs> don't let me I die mean, like this, Miller. How how good will your medical roll be? Should we just do it separately? I'm rolling nine dice right now. <laughs> I'm rolling ten dice. Okay, so probably separately, rather than just one person rolling. Yeah, getting a plus one. 11. Yeah, and before two panic yeah. rolls. <laughs> I and before, before. there's a lot of stress here right now. <laughs> um, technically, oh. both of you succeeded. Cham, let's see it. This is a very stressful I, situation. I, in, I increase stress first, right? Then panic. Um, no, you don't increase stress until you, um, like, unless you roll something that makes you, so you're fine. Nice, not one. Yeah, thank God. And, uh, okay, so you, you, the two of you managed to patch, uh, Leah, you've now got, like, um, 
a really shitty, probably just like fashioned out of pipe splint or something. They've they've got you bandaged up with what material they have on hand, but you can you can walk now. Oily rag. Yeah, you're you're at least able to walk. You're not bleeding out. You're fine, ish. Um, so you're back to one health. Got like a belt tourniquet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah, perf. Okay, so okay, you, uh, you guys are I'm crawling I'm going to turn to Cham and say, get her up to medical, because I'm going to go find that bitch. Which now, one? did I get hit, or did I get stabbed? I think I just got hit, right? Yeah, you, you got, got hit clubbed. with uh, yeah, with the wrench. Mm. Okay. So you're not, there's I'm nothing, <laughs> like, bleeding on you, thankfully. And your well, suit's I intact. Fucking concussion. <laughs> yeah. Um, Leah, on the other hand, her faceplate oh, was cracked. Okay. So she's um, now gasping as she breathes because there's, I mean, there's still tons of air in the ship, but the air quality is shittier. Like she can feel it, and she's also in a lot of pain, and so her body's trying to make her breathe more. I, I'm I'm actually just gonna be like, wait, hang on. So would I know how to fix this, or, or what's um, the deal with that? Because the the engines are still fucked. Yeah, I would say, um. Okay, go ahead and give me a heavy machinery roll. See if Cham would be able to MacGyver something here. If not, uh, if you, if okay. You uh, that's okay. That that one's fine. Doesn't really affect us. So I'm gonna say Cham basically gives an ultimatum at this point. Is you can patch it up. You can basically get it so the ship is stable for a period it could be 20 minutes it could be 20 hours it could be a day you're not sure but you can get it stable for a minute and unfortunately it looks like we're gonna have to to cut our losses and get the montero out of here because you're not going to be able to stop the heat from reaching a point um that will not ignite all the um what's our helium three called or whatever or something. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot. It's been two weeks. Trillium. So what? What happened with the computer terminal then? Ah, okay. So do you look at it? Um yeah. Do you have Comtech? I think Cham might. I have crappy Comtech. But okay, but you can I give it a it. shot. Or Miller, I would assume, has... I think I think Miller should probably look at it, right? Yeah. No. You would figure, but no. Apparently I had zero fucking com tech. You What's your wits, though? I have low wits. I have two. Okay, I'm rolling it then. <laughs> yeah. Seems apparently so. I'm a captain who doesn't know how to captain their fucking ship. Perfect. So, Cham, um, the console's locked out. And it, it doesn't let you... Um, uh, like, do anything with it. On the ground is a key card and uh, the like a like an ID kind of key card thing. And it says Lori Clayton on it. Um, and anything you try to do, it's like error. This, like, terminal is locked or whatever. And it just repeats that um, special order. What did I say here? Like nine something something. I thought you said like ninety six. Nine sixty six. Special order nine sixty six. I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell Miller to put their key card in the uh in the thing. Okay. Um, he I does. Gotta, uh, nothing. Wait, wait. What about the key card that's on the ground? Does that unlock it? Oh, okay. Um, so that unlocks it, and it it asks for a password. It says, "Welcome back, Lori Clayton." Um, uh, what password cancels special order 966? Is there a mother terminal down here? No, there'd be the one up in the bridge. Well, but I mean, like... I guess there'd the... probably be one halfway or something, but like a, like a, not mother herself, but like a terminal of Reacher. That that seems reasonable. We could probably just sort of cut the shit and say there's one, like, near-ish by? But they probably wouldn't really need one below deck. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's um, more of, like, a command person kind of thing? Well, is there a printout of the shit for Order 966 around here? 
Ah, nothing. Like, was it just spitting out of all of the consoles? Yes, it, it like it just spit out all of those things. Well, it was actually just at the the, the command station, um, or the bridge, but it it sprint out that it was activated. But nothing you search up or type in or anything will tell you what that is. And it, it says um, directives have already been given to you, uh, Lori Clayton. Now, speaking uh, of, oh. we're going to pause for just a minute while you ruminate and pop over to our good friend, Wilson. And John J. Wilson received special messages from Mother directly in the hollow terminal in the bridge to make his way and have a chat Mother. Oh, right. Um, yes. um I guess I, I did. Now, well, th this, <laughs> this is when you stepped out, it. unfortunately. But um, I figured. Yeah, so that's why we didn't actually resolve the scene. But, uh, oh, hang on, my computer fucking froze. No, 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 no. Don't do that right here at the, the apex of this. <laughs> so, mother spits out. Doot, 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 doot. And, and you, you type to her for a hot minute. Go talk with mother on my ship before it explodes. That's reasonable. Well, she wanted to talk with me before. She did. Yeah. Once her fuck even got there. 1960 security? That's not wrong, yeah. It's it's probably uh, Waylon. Uh, who's the guy from Waylon Utani? Like the head guy. It's his birthday or something. <laughs> it's a corporate dispatch saying everyone is mandated to say happy birthday to Waylon Utani. Well, what what I'm guessing is that it's not even going to lock you out after like five tries or something. So you could just start tr guessing shit. Okay. Um, are you guessing in character or out of character? Well, I'm. I'm ruminating on that right okay, now. Okay, because I'm actually fine with uh, you taking a few guesses. I, I have a question. Yes. How did my character respond to the incredible stressful events that happened on the bridge before I had to step out? Because I knew I had taken quite a bit of stress where I was, I think you said I was shaken? Yeah, you were shaken, but aside from that, you, you basically dropped a mic, and that was it. And nothing else mm -hmm. happened on the bridge except, um, the only things you missed, and again, sorry, is Leah going... Oh fuck! The airlock opened and it's in. Because all of a sudden, even though the he had, like Leah had locked the airlock, it it eventually opened, like it not like it was forced. It just opened, and the figure came in, and that was the last we heard of Leah. And that's when uh, Captain Miller took Cham and said, "Look, we're going back to Montero. There's some shit going down." And then found out that the whole thing was going to explode, and that's the situation we're in now. Right now, Wilson hasn't heard any of that. As far as he knows, they've gone back to the Montero to check. He's doing fine. Everyone on the bridge is feeling good. Um, Dr. Scientist is looking over the specimen. Doesn't quite know what to think of it, but they're looking. And uh, you got the thing that said, uh, right away, I need to talk to John J... Or is it John J? Wilson, yeah. John J. Wilson, and you're like, oh... J. Sure. Jonah Jameson. Like, this is pretty standard um, corpo procedure. You know, you get the call from mother. You go say hi. It's um, it's usually something minor. Sometimes it's. Um, By the way, uh, <laughs> we've changed where your ship's headed. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. But um, the Waylon Yutani has your best interests in mind. Just wants to keep you in the loop. So let's go ahead and head back to the Montero herself, where we have our little crew. And I need to go talk with Mother. All right, and you're chatting with Mother. So, what dost thou say to Mother? Uh, Anything? Okay. Uh, you put your, yeah. your card in. and Yeah, slot the card in. Uh... You wanted to talk with me? Because I have a lot of questions for you. Um, it's uh, d -d 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 acknowledged. How can I help you, Captain Miller? Special Order 966 activated. Please evacuate the Montero. Uh, uh, 
Specifics of Order 966. Classified. Biological Containment. Uh, what would be the term I'm looking for here? Um, override 966? <laughs> no, like... Um, <laughs> How about no where, computer? <laughs> where did 966 originate from? Ah, uh, okay. Um, originated from Wayland Utani headquarters. Uh, okay, um, order nine six six purpose. Oh, um, trying to think what mother would say. Um, processing probably like prevent spread of blah blah blah. Yeah, blah. they would be like um, quarantine, something like that. Quarantine biological contaminants by blowing up the ship. <laughs> um. Let's see what else would it be. Um, yeah, I mean, like nine six six override code. Access denied. Uh. Okay, I'm gonna head back over to the bridge really quick. Okay. So the name of the key card that's down in with me is that the name of the corporate liaison? Oh, it is. Yeah. Good okay. memory. Yeah. I'm going to head in here, and I'm going to grab Mother's control key out of the little box. Oh, I love that. That's good. Yes. Okay. I'm going to walk back in. I'm going to fucking slot it into Mother. 966. Six, override code. Enter. Oh, that was fun. Did you do that? Like, sound on your end? Yes. What is that? Oh, that was super fun. Okay. Because I have a glass six, desk. I was... Oh, that's fun. Okay, it just sounded like you were typing on something fancy. Um, override. <laughs> And it, um, there's like a pause. It said, override denied. Montero, uh, the destruction of Montero, priority one. Priority one, um, contain biological contaminants. You can lie to the computer, say biological contaminants are contained. Yeah, um, biological contaminants on other ship space contain um chronos is uh, classified as a non-threat chronos not in working order the chronos cannot leave the montero is the only source of the biological contaminant escaping Okay. So would it be possible for us to air gap the uh computer controlling the reactor from mother and then be able to do whatever we want to it? Okay, that's fine. So I feel like you could mm -hmm. probably pull something like that off. But it's one of those things that, like, if you fucked up, like, there is no saving whoever does it. It's like, she will register it as, like, an attack and just blow the ship. Like, right now she's giving you a chance, and that's something she doesn't have to do. I mean, we could turn off Mother right now, too, right? Because that's always within the captain's uh, purview to turn off Mother. It's true. Even during emergencies. You could turn off Mother. Yes. Override command authority. Shut down reactor. Oh, that's fun. 
Okay. Um, so. Because Org 966 be damned. If the reactor is cold, then. <laughs> That's true. Okay, I like that. So hang on, hang on. The reactor's trying to overheat. What if we invert the temperature sensor so it tur it makes it cooler instead? <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty modern. Fun. Modern problems require asinine solutions. <laughs> Not say no, but damn. <laughs> well, I mean, it would just you would just flip the voltage, right? Because it would be a voltage, uh, like temperature sensor. Probably. Yeah, thermal couple, yeah. Okay. I... But eh. hmm. What's her response to the shutdown? Because if not, we can try and fiddle fuck with the wiring, because me. Eh. Okay, I'm gonna say um that the the power uh sort of comes back on full strength. So the opposite of what we wanted to happen. Oh, um, no, like, um, it says, like, uh, command acknowledged or something. And, like, the power comes on full strength. And um, as Cham's watching the monitors and stuff like that, the reactor uh, temperature seems to level out. Hmm. Do I have access to the console now? Yep. Like, fully? Yep, you're back. Okay. Again. I'm gonna. Uh, sorry, I, I'm just gonna set the reactor into like low power mode. I just so keep that it, it that way. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm. I just mean like keep the heat down like below like twenty percent or something. Yeah, just in case. Uh... Like, I mean, we can have the air con on and we can have the uh, the lights on, but I don't think we need anything else right now. That's fair enough. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, since I'm done talking with Mother, I'm going to go back over to the uh, bridge console, mm -hmm. and I'm going to page over to the other ship. Okay. Well, so I need you over here. On so I can go over to the other ship, or whatever now. Okay, so Wilson's going to head over. Can I see at the bottom of the pit? Like, uh, like if you had, like if you're in the engine, you mean, sorry? Yeah, like, um, yeah can I, I shine my light down? Oh, that's fun. I'm going to say, honestly, there's a lot of heat, and this is like a massive room, right? There's probably like a, a thin layer of a mist of some kind. Um, I'm going to say you, you can't quite see the bottom. Are you just sort of making out for the figure at the bottom? Yeah, I want to make sure it's still fucking there. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Okay, give, give me an observation roll as you take out oh, like blind your, shit. your suit flashlight, and you're like, Shh, where the Fuck. Okay. Okay. Nice. Um, well, Cham has no reason to panic as the body oh. is still laying there. Um, okay. You can sort of make out a bit of a shape. Uh, you can't quite see blood, but you, you can make an assumption. Whatever's down there is pretty fucked up. If not How dead, hard would it be for me to dead. climb down there and double tap? <laughs> Okay, um, what's your manipulation? Is it good? Uh, oh, yeah, there's the coup de grace roll, right? Yeah, because I mean, you can I go have, ahead and just, yeah. I've got three agility, so. Um, I think it's empathy, isn't it? Oh, well, yeah, empathy is when he goes to kill it. This is basically, okay, make. Now, nah, let's go ahead and say you're fine. Uh, I mean, you're just going to take your time as opposed to rushing down there. And yeah. Cham, Cham's like a monkey in this sort of quarter of the ship. Like, he knows his way around. So you, 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 you get down, and Valerie's laying there, uh, just wheezing. You know, and just looks up at you, like, with sad eyes, like, tears just streaming out. Um, Why did you try to blow up the ship? They offered me a new life. Who offered you a new life? Wayland Yutani. They were gonna... They we're gonna get us all out of here. When did you get this message? Not long ago. 
shortly before the air came back on. So that must have been our, I'm gonna, I'm ruminating to myself for this one. Uh, that must have been our computer talking to, did it come through your mother terminals? Yeah, mother, uh, she says, you know, mother, mother uh, contacted me. How did she know where you were? She's been following me, watching me. She said she'd show me where the escape pod was. There's an escape pod that you don't know where it is on the other ship? None of us had clearance. Only our liaison knew where it was. It was What's the some... liaison's password? <clears throat> she, like, spits up a bunch of blood. I don't know. It, uh, the card let me turn everything on, but I wasn't able to get back. I tried to use it to open parts of the ship that were locked, but nothing was happening. Mm. Uh, uh, well, we have a second there. Uh, Raffle the hands. Oh, oh, yeah, thank you. She, um, she sort of like holds a an arm out like towards you. And uh, she says, I don't think I'll make it. Tell Cooper I'm sorry. Was Cooper the the captain? Or... Uh, Cooper, head scientist. Head scientist? Okay. On the other ship. Yeah. Um, I will if I see him. And then I'm going to stab her. <laughs> okay, again. so you got to make an empathy roll here to actually kill someone in cold blood. It's not cold blood. She fucking tried to murder me. <laughs> yeah, but and my and my fucking crew member. It's actually who I am it's super loyal to. That's that's true. It's pretty funny. Um, if you try and kill someone, like if you kill someone in combat, like that's rough. But it's like if you kill someone, like like when they're laying there, like Bambi, that's no good. But, uh, it. I mean, you can. You just have to roll empathy to see if your character has it in them. I don't oh. have any manipulation, so... That's fine. Oh, it's not manipulation, it's just straight empathy. Well, I, I don't have any... Oh, okay, sorry, yeah. So. Um, give me a panic as the knife slits her throat and her eyes go black. Nice. I mean, that's pretty suitable for the scene, yeah. Because Cham's like a big softy too, right? So, he just sort of... I mean... This is 100% what he would do, though. This oh, no, I, I, two like, of his I do completely agree with you. Like, I'm I'm not saying it's out of character. I'm just saying, you know, sort of thematically and, like, as as a movie, it's like, you know, Cham, like, stabs her throat and she's, like, gurgling out. And he probably, like, holds her hand as she slowly, like, her grip loosens and loosens and she falls I down. I seek cover from the dying body, apparently. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Um, it does say my stress decreases by one, though. Yeah, your stress goes down by one. Yeah, so this was like a really tense moment, and like you're sort of just like, it was fuck. Cathartic. But it was cathartic. Yeah, I think in a way, just maybe the mindset of like the ship is safer now. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? The danger's gone. All right, so let us pop back up to the bridge. I think. Quite reasonable. Um, so, Wilson, were you you coming to hang out with? Uh... You did ask to speak with me. Okay, so I figured I it would be impolitic, and also I have no reason not to. So, okay, so you've shown up now. You don't know anything yet. Uh, you don't even nobody else. Uh, so Fox and Rudy, uh, which is actually kind of perfect, because um, the session will probably go on for like another half an hour or something, and then we can. Um, you know, fill Rudy in tomorrow, and basically everything he's missed, his character wasn't there for. Um, so that's mm -hmm. actually kind of cool. Um, so Fox and Rudy are the only people, and Zelfa have no idea about any of this, about about the hell that has just happened on the Montero, uh, including that the reactor almost exploded. <laughs> so Wilson oh, comes in. You can the well airlock. imagine. You can well imagine people just going. So let me get this straight. Our ride home almost blew up. Yeah, so yeah. that's basically Wilson's no walking in, probably not even looking a bit shaken because 
again, the weirdest thing that happened was that alien tumor thing, and he was like, what the fuck? You know, maybe, maybe he looks a little bit nervous because he did freak out about that, but that's about it. Comes in, walks onto the bridge, um, and begins. Seeing, so, uh, uh, sorry, Origami, is your character in the bridge as well? Sort of laying on a uh, chair with your leg wrapped up? I was actually going to ask some questions. I like, say, what happened to, what happened to them? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why I want to yeah. set where Origami is first. Where are you in the yeah. scene? Yeah. Is Origami in medical? <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Am I in medical? Just thinking about, or I'm in like. Uh, so that's up to you. Do you want to lay in the med lab by yourself, or would you feel more comfortable, like in the bridge? <clears throat> uh, to be honest, in the bridge. Oh, yeah, because if I was medical, medical it, also has drugs it, that you could be raiding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they deserve I, them at this point. I already have a full pill bottle because I raided it earlier. That's true. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's up to you. You you pick which scene you're going to be in, med lab or bridge. I would say bridge because it, if they were falling down and they were somehow survived, this is my character thinking, they will go immediately to to um to uh med and med bay. So I might as well go in uh the bridge, so I won't have another encounter with them. I might even so not. I might not be able to survive the next encounter. Okay. So yeah, yeah. is Origami still technically at zero HP, or is how does stabilization HP? work? Goes to one. Yeah, currently my I'm just shaking it. I'm just taking uh, painkillers <laughs> as Selfish Carus is walking in. All right. So, All right. so Wilson Wilson comes in the room, and sorry, Zelfus, you were saying the what the fuck is wrong with you? Or, or sorry, the, I assume Wait, Wilson. What happened speak. to your leg? We'll and why are that. you injured? We'll get to that. What happened? Tell me, Mister uh, Corporate Representative. All right. You know the different orders for things that can go wrong on a ship. There in the Whalen yutani handbook for you, I'd imagine. It's actually built in a different way. Most common things that were handed down are special orders, for example, finding unique resources, competition muscling in on the location, shipping rights, what our authority is and how far we can push it in regards to it. You get the idea. Mm. However, there are other tiers of this. So if something special comes down that we're not prepped for or we're not told in advance, we're basically told at the last second going, hey, by the way, this is unpacking now, and you either have to accept, or there will be consequences. Otherwise, there will be time-sensitive information, for example, using the mining one I just said. If we don't get to a claim quickly enough, guess who's holding the bag, Captain? You and I, for missing out on that rich seam of whatever in the fuck. Not really my, I would say, specialty in the side. We're not that kind of crew. Okay. Now... Another question for you. Have you heard of the Wayland yutani Special Order Number 966 to deal with biological contaminants? No, I haven't. What is it? Well, it's something to do with what we just found on that ship there. It's a biological contaminant. Apparently, Order 966, passed down from Wayland yutani is to stop any and all escape of the biological contaminant. Did it by, listen, why? By destroying my fucking ship. Wait, let me understand this correctly. This special order entails destroying our only means of leaving this broken yes. down wreck. And what are we supposed to do? Stay on this piece of shit and hope we can maybe get it going? Oh, no, no. Mother was already in the midst of melting down the reactor, so it detonated. She fucking what was... Wait, wait. The <laughs> ship was trying to blow itself up on a special order that it From received. From Wayland yutani yes. Mr. Representative. Should we leave, or is it still a problem? It's been handled. That's why I'm questioning you. You're the representative here for the company, and the company just tried to nuke us. 
I would like to point something out before you go along that completely logical course of reasoning. If your ship blows up while I'm on the ship next to it, it is that close. I too am going to burn just slightly less quickly as you. Well, especially with all really this, uh, hydrogen on board. Yeah. Like I said, when I say not as soon, I mean in the picoseconds, but. Mm -hmm. All right. I have received yeah. special orders upon receipt of this before we changed our course correction. I was to locate and rescue and detain any survivors from this original issue because they're wanted for questioning in regards to their research. What their research was is not in my listing orders. But there was a survivor. How about you let me see those listing orders there, friend? Let me ask you, did you actually leave Mother operational or did one of you take a hydro spanner to it? Oh, if she tries anything again, she will be so much more than dead. The key is already in the console. So, she's on as thin of ice as you are right now. Let's see those orders, hmm? Well, we'll have to head back to the, state, the primary facility. Oh, by the way, before you, again, see the end of my orders and see what they are and your patience snaps with me, I know we haven't had the best relationship so far. I'm not going to lie to you here. If anyone of our crew became irrevocably unsalvageable, was the terminology, I believe, I was also to detain them. But since none of us are, aside from this one needing a doctor urgently, I don't see any sort of infection or contamination, aside from maybe... My leg don't work. I, I can see that, thank you. I was referring more to what might be in your bloodstream and saturating your brain at the moment, but that too. I mean, I, I told you guys that I took a whiff of the air too, so you would know that. Hmm. You you do oh, realize yeah. I'm trying I'm trying to be diplomatic about the fact that you might actually be a walking biohazard, and that it would be safer for everyone to see you in an isolation chamber and given a clean bill of health before you start mingling with the normal population of whatever colony or station we happen upon. Yeah, that I mean that's why I've kept my suit on since then. Yeah. That is commendable, I will say. Oh, and speaking of Order 966 and biological contaminants, we have one of those on board. It's the uh, missing crew member from your other ship. Wayland yutanis ship. I don't own the other ship. I'd like to point that out. You just said you were aware that we are being redirected to it. This is your orders. It's so not it's... my ship. That's we what I'm telling you. Us being here is on your head. We just it's on uh, the okay. company's head, who also happens to hold the purse strings to your ship, and you, and me, and him, and her. This entire operation is being bankrolled and subsidized by the Wayland Teutonic Corporation, LLC, and etc. I don't know the legal jargon or the finances. I'm not a banker, nor am I a lawyer. But they're the company. You know what happens to people who decide to skip town with corporate property or corporate secrets i am not the corporation i'm here to do a job get paid maybe get a promotion i would love a vacation and quite frankly if you're going to be pissed at someone be pissed at the idiot who started this whole ball of events going down the road i'm here along with you and everyone else to try and salvage the situation get out alive get paid and be on with our miserable little lives Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to need to bring Grandma back off of my ship. Wait, Grandma? Oh, yeah. Who's Grandma? Super, super Grandma. The one what the hell is a Super Grandma? <laughs> the one that was supposed to have been alone in the depths of the... What the hell's the other ship, Ropple? Oh, the Cronus. Yeah. The one that's been alone in the depths of the Cronus for 50 years without an oxygen supply. Somehow How was she... alive and kicking and came onto my ship to overload the reactor. She almost this raises me. many more questions. I'm not a biologist nor, quite frankly, a doctor. We require oxygen to survive. I know that much. I was there for middle school and kindergarten. But uh, 50 years and still kicking... And she had enough of her faculties left to even try and overload. How did she get the codes? She has the key card, well, had the key card of the company liaison 
from the Cronus. And his clearance or her clearance is higher than mine because I know for sure that I can't uh, instigate an overload of a ship unless either you're dead or something has gone so catastrophically wrong that Mother decides, well, a thermonuclear explosion would solve this problem. Mm hmm. Well, Cham is currently below decks, making sure that Grandma there is dead. By the way, Grandma is the one who single handedly did the damage to our, uh, to Leah here. You got your leg broken and ribs busted up by a pensioner? Yes, that geriatric was more than strong enough to overpower Cham. Was Jam lucid? Was Cham lucid at the time? Yes, and she took an entire burst to the chest and just kind of shrugged it. Super grandma. Yeah, she 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 took a burst to the chest from an M forty one pulse rifle. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, I thought a full burst to the chest meant like actually taking a hypodermic needle and just stabbing it into her. But uh, yeah. you shot so. Again, for my adult mind, a geriatric pension. A geriatric was able a, to It was running around your ship after being without oxygen for over half a century and was able to break our meth addict's leg, survive a gunshot. No, sorry, survive multiple gunshot wounds. Multiple gunshot wounds to the torso, overpower our Chad whilst being bleeding horribly from these gunshot wounds. Yeah. She took multiple stabs, too. I'm going to guess that she was the biological contaminant. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay. Doctors in our stout crew here. Uh, is there any way to get what remains of nuclear grandmama? back into some sort of containment system and put her in a freezer for the eggheads back at Wayland. Is it even safe to do so? Let me ask the more important question. Because you said she's in the reactor of your ship. Sorry. The ship. To be clear on this. It's, it's right next to being my ship. But for yes, now... Until, the, until your signature's on that digipad, it's not. So let's just keep being convivial to one another, shall we? Hmm. Well, for now, yes, but I think it'd be better if we were to take Granny, put her back on the Cronus, and execute Order 966 on the Cronus instead, because clearly that has a lot of biological contaminants. Considering what Ada said about their janitor, one Fred Bowen, who was able to kill three people with his bare hands after being exposed, and Grandma, down there, in the stowage bay, was able to do all of this damage by herself. I don't think Wayland yutani needs this. And again, that isn't for you or I to decide. I will grant you that, given the current circumstances, modifications to our current methodology should be considered. I offer a counterproposal. Clearing the data cores from their ship, bringing it back to your pending ship, having that stored away with their entire research and containment logs, we will transfer the living containers that, sorry, the living cryopods that are actually having some of their crew stuck in them in popsicle mode. We'll stash them on your ship again, giving you the benefit of the doubt. We'll stash them aboard your ship. We'll mop up, quite figuratively and literally, whatever remains of of bionic grandma put her into a containment system or if the doctors here feel that it would be more appropriate we can stash her in a, with the remnants of her in a cryo tube and let the doctors thaw her out for whatever they need even though the ship is in all likelihood a technological loss at this point I think the corporation given current situations I think and again I'm just acting as their representative I believe that with everything else, the biological data, the technical data, and the loss of the ship will outweigh the other. We lose the ship, we save all the data, and provide samples for the corporation. 
and you get to sign off on your ship. I don't think they need samples. We can get them the information. You can hand them back a a chip with it, but I don't think we need to You bring... know as well as I do that simply having a chip that says X, Y, and Z worked is not the same as having something under a, a microscopic lens, taking samples, running blood cultures, and etc., which is what they were doing originally. So unless you have managed to find a more prominent example of whatever they're after, I don't really believe that the corporate heads are going to be extremely happy with you destroying the ship, the biological samples, and then handing them a textbook going, well, pick it up from here. Do you really think that the corporate sharks on the ladder much, much higher on the rungs than I are going to be pleased with you, me, or anyone else here if you do that? Do you think or even forget about being paid or insurance or anything else in regards to your well being or the continued prosperity of your life if you cross Wayland Yutani on this? And, Captain, I do want to elucidate the point it won't just be you going down, it will be everyone else here. And I know you don't give a shit, but you'll be dragging me down with you too. And as tempting as that might be, I'd hope the others weigh out that desirable entry. Let me ask you this. How do you propose that we take these biological samples if I was to be insane enough to compromise my entire ship by bringing them on board? Where would we stow them so that we don't die or mutate or whatever it is these biological samples do on our way back to the frontier to deliver our hydrogen and then all the way back to Wayland Yutani. I'm very glad you asked, because I've been giving it some consideration on the way back here, thinking about the biological samples we'd have to get anyway as part of my orders from Wayland Yutani, which, quite frankly, given the situation, I was hoping to have a more warm reception to with, aha, we're done, and then this, anyway. It's neither here nor there. The current crew, it's a very easy solution. Cryopods are self-sustained and contain situations with a inbuilt life support system that will last for many, 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 many years. So we'll disconnect those individually, transfer them across in a clean suit environment to the cargo hold. We'll reinstall a jerry rig patch to provide them with consistent power going forward. And we will isolate the bulkheads. However, for the more prominent biological samples, like uh, what was the crewman's name? Uh, Grandma. What would you say her name was? Uh, Granny down there would be one Valerie Reed, who has All been right. unaccounted for, for, what was it, uh, 73 years, was it? Um, 60-something. She old. She old. All right. All right. We will, in clean suits, we will gather up the remnants of Miss Reed, we'll place them into a secured cryopod, and then using our vast array of technical components aboard the ship, we will weld it shut. Because she's already dead, she's not going to have to get up and get out and move around later. And the suits and their scientists can just crack that can open and get to the contents when they're ready. I would, however, stress that as another safety precaution, we should also transfer across the ship's android to act as a, I would say, biological, technological watchman monitoring the cryo tubes, making sure their occupants don't suddenly decompress or try to thaw out and left, like you left a TV dinner on the kitchen table at night? Uh, those biological contaminants seem to be possibly airborne, judging by what you all encountered in the air recycler. I imagine Ada is very, very much contaminated. And she we might shouldn't not be brave, but <sighs> well, if you feel that she's that much of a risk, we can leave her behind. A cryopod will serve just as well. Can you freeze sense out of character? Can you freeze sense or how does that work? I think you just turn them off. Yeah, you just flick the switch. So we could like 
just stick them in a cryopod. It doesn't even need to be powered then and just seal it. But... Yeah, you can do that. Hmm. So we do have two options. If you feel that she's in a, in a completely unrecoverable state, we can leave her behind. Turn her off, let another salvage crew come get to her, or we can tell her that it's nap time and blow the ship once we're a safe distance away. If you'd like to bring her back, I'm sure the company would be happy to throw in a bonus for more additional uh, technology and also the only eyewitness to the events that transpired here, being able to dissect her memories and figure out where exactly the chain of events went wrong would in all likelihood net you and I a bonus, which I won't say no to. I don't know about you. But again, I do share your concerns about the biological airborne contaminants, which is why in a clean suited environment under zero atmosphere, will we be transferring them over, making the modifications to a sectioned off portion of the cargo bay, making sure that it is airtight with a small recycling pump and taking the necessary precautions that we can think of along the way. I know that I am not a technician, but I will accept input from everyone else who can try to make this project work. If you have an idea, anyone about how we can make it safer to transfer across, to seal them away until we can get them to the proper people. Let's hear it. Hmm. Well, Ada's not coming over here under her own power. Perhaps in a cryopod, or perhaps she can just be uh, space dust. Either way, that airborne contaminant is staying on their side of the umbilical. As I would expect, considering what you've been through. Even if it wasn't for the fact that the injuries upon our fellow crew member and the seriousness of your expression, I would, again, be highly skeptical, skeptical about a grandmother doing all of this. But let's just oh, yeah, work. Yeah. <laughs> Are we in agreement, Captain? We'll be in agreement once I can go see your orders from the company. So I know that you're not just here to kill us. Fine, but I would like you to challenge the logic of this. If I kill you, how am I getting home? Because, well, because I can't fly a ship. Stopping you, or attempting to stop you, from bringing back all of these live samples... You don't need me, you just need the pilot here. The pilot, who is currently passing out and hovering on the edge of consciousness with more drugs in their system than a pharmacy. Do you really think I trust my chances that much? Come on, be realistic. I think you would trust your chances with the company more than you trust your chances oh, with the No, 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 you don't understand. I might work for them, but I've seen plenty of people, much <laughs> much, much more influential than I try to cross the company or do something incredibly stupid like strike out on their own or even worse, double cross the company. Um, it didn't end well for them or their families or their friends. And quite frankly, I don't want to be a target under that very, very large shadow when it decides to fall my way. Do you understand? I'm not crossing you. I'm not crossing the company. I'm trying to make the objective happen. I'm trying to get paid. And quite frankly, I'm tired of these little shit podunk runs where I don't get any sort of credit and I get a stipend that allows me to live long enough from job to job. I'm looking for upward mobility. I'm looking to get something, a sinister, that I'm not going to have to go out into these little shit missions where things can go wrong because some dickhead at HQ decided, uh, yeah, we got a ship near there. Let's see if we can put them in mortal peril. Come on, I'll show you my original orders. Let's go. Hmm. I just want to say that was beautiful. <laughs> it's been how many years? Like, guys, both of you guys like started role playing with me. We were like, never got you guys to have like an in character conversation before. Unscripted. Wah, chef kiss, you know. Love it. It's pretty cool. It's like, it's like watching your kids grow up, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it we're actually gonna skip over here um 
and end our session with these three. Uh, Fox, are you there? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So this is your little scene. So all this is going on. There was a big conversation. During that conversation, the pinging started going off again. Ping, ping, ping. And um, a uh, Ava, what was it? Ava 6 is like, I hear footsteps coming from the junction. It's getting closer. Oh, it is Ava. Closer. I've been calling her Ada this whole time. <laughs> I, I knew you were saying Ada, and that's what got me, me messed up, but I didn't even worry about it. And um, you actually see the door open somewhat, and Ava is um, Ava's standing, like, sort of defensively. She she reaches over and grabs, like, a fire extinguisher or something. It's empty, but, you know, she's holding it, like, primed at the door, like, ready to defend the two of you. And uh, the door swings open, and um, two people step towards towards the room. One of them is a very old and haggard-looking man, um, blondish hair, uh, like a sort of a goatee, glasses, and he's uh, propped up on the other man, who's uh, younger-looking, um, and they they both look worn for shit. And Are they both wearing lab coats? Kind of looks like it in there. Yes, uh, one of them's wearing definitely a lab coat. The other one is sort of a um a medical kind of coat. And yeah, she's gonna robust some people. Yeah, somebody the, pulled out the pop circles. Yeah, so the one <laughs> on the left here that he's um sort of wheezing and he like half like like spits up a little bit of vomit. So I've got the worst. Worst headache, the terrible migraine. The one that's sort of propping him up says, uh, "We need assistance. Um, if you can help us get to Med Bay, both of us are suffering from extreme cases of um, sleeping sickness. Uh, we've been in the tubes so long in cryo that our bodies are completely dehydrated, and it's it's going to take some work to get those fluids back into us." Oh, fuck. So, do you want to end it there, Fox? Or how do you react? Am I the only one here with... You're there with Dr. Scientist and the robot. Um, Uh, No, Dr. Scientist wouldn't be there. He'd be in the science lab. He's studying the uh, the sample. He already went. Okay, so he's in the science lab, yes. We'll describe that scene to him when he gets there. What are your thoughts here, Fox? Um, do I have any way of contacting him, like radio or anything? <laughs> so maybe we should do this next time, because my first thought would be to talk to Rudy's character. No, that's fine. Yeah. fine. Um, so Rudy, uh, honestly, let's... I don't know. I know Rudy wanted to go to the science lab, but... You think he actually will ask him tomorrow or well not tomorrow but the next time we do this whether or not he did head the sci lab um i think we'll we'll leave him in this scene but that was his intention kind of he, maybe he was just hanging with um ayla and ada or ava or whichever <laughs> now i'm confused with the ava. I, was saying, I was saying ada could be the actual person borrowed character robo lady yeah <laughs> Yes. Um, I mean, honestly, we could just be like, this thing jumped out of a vent, Cham stabbed it, he handed it to you, what did you do <laughs> with it? Yeah, uh, we, we could definitely do that. We could also... Um, so I think, I think that's fair that Kayla would have wanted to call people. Um, We'll say that maybe you tried reaching the bridge of the Montero, but you weren't able to because they were in their conversation. Mm. Um, and they just never clicked the thing to, to chat back with you or something like that. They were sort of caught up in the heat of passion. So, mm. Um, mm. <laughs> enemies <laughs> to lovers? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's a good ship. Um, <laughs> so, I don't know. Uh, that's up to you, Fox. Do you want to end it here, or do you want to escort these guys over to Med Lab, or do you want to um, just light up your flamethrower and <laughs> just commit a war crime? <laughs> I mean, she's not lighting up her flamethrower, but she is pointing it at them and telling them to keep back. Okay, that's fair. Show them trust it. That's fair. That's why I want to talk to Rudy's character, because he's a doctor, and... uh... That's fair enough. Okay, well, we can end it here, then. Um, The the one on the right, um, that would be Dr. Liam Flynn. Uh, he's going to say that it's okay, we've both been inoculated, um, and we can create more of the serum. I'll have to fill you in, all of you in more, but we really do need to get rehydrated. We need to get back on our feet, because we've been asleep so long. Wait, Wait they've both been inoculated? I, Cooper said that Flynn was crazy and refused to take the inoculation. But Lynn said they've both been inoculated. Ah, oh, okay, fair. But I mean, these but guys have been asleep for refused. fifty years. Mm. Just, just a quick sec. Isn't he down here where the the pods are? Uh, one deck below. They're at, uh, one deck above. That's where the pods oh, are. Oh, well, either way, different oh. deck. Yes, yeah, they're on deck okay. A. So they came down through the stairwell. So they were on their way. Okay. Yeah, they were just basically coming down to the bridge. Um, they probably didn't even know you guys were there. They were probably just headed to the bridge because their pods opened. They were like, huh? But that's the DM just putting a little bit of thought out there. I can't tell you why they came to the bridge. Okay. All certain. Um, probably because they came down the ladder and like the doors and the junction and into the bridge were still like just open. So it's like, oh, is there somebody in the bridge? And I guess like, you know, if. If you just woke up and you needed like literal medical assistance, you would probably head to the bridge to see if anyone's there because that's where people would probably be, like there, or, like oh, the mess really? hall. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I mean it's barely out of your way anyway. Yeah, because you're you're going through literally the open two here. doors. Oh, you know, and that's also where they could just sort of intercom. Anybody fucking here? Help! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll call it there then. Pretty good session, actually. Uh, a lot done. Um, I think tomorrow, uh, tomorrow we are going to hit act, or not tomorrow, but tomorrow, the next session, sorry, we will hit act two for sure. And at that point I will, um, like when we hit act two, which should be shortly into the session, um, we'll kind of do like a, a fade to black act two appears, fade back in, uh, we'll reset a scene and I will give all of you new personal agendas. And we get like a stress reduction too. Right? Yeah, and you'll you'll get the lose a point of stress, so that'll help. Um, because obviously, a lot of things have happened, and that's your characters reevaluating what they wanted <laughs> to accomplish. Because um, some of you may have changed ideas. Like some of you might be like, "Fuck this, getting out of dodge," kind of thing. Uh, we'll see. Um, we'll have to figure out when everybody's free, but. Dino, can you do Tuesdays and Wednesdays still? Uh, let me check real quick. Okay. If you just let me know that you're free now. I'm just almost... saying, the fact that the corporate suite and the EEV are turned sideways compared to the rest of the text is driving me fucking insane. Oh, it is kind of, yeah, odd. It's a choice. It was a bold choice. <laughs> well, pro they probably they couldn't knew. get it to Mara, They knew. Story. Individuals like you who have a meticulous eye for detail, this would drive you batty, and they're just like, yeah, the, fuck them. The storage is also uh, <laughs> a little weird yeah, there. Like, there's no way else to fit storage, but they could totally fit corporate suite in there. They've got that L section going up. Put <laughs> what, corporate in there. What about Mech B? <laughs> that could have been either way. Could have been a bigger font, too. Yeah. Fuckers. Uh, so next week I'm actually free Monday through uh, Wednesday. So oh, okay, that's fun. three days, cool. Um, well, let's call it here. Um, you know, good night, everybody, and all that kind of cool stuff. Good shit, yeah. and we'll chat good in job. Discord about what days are good. You, you got it. Remember, get some rest. You've been working your ass off. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs>